Good evening. It's great to have you with us on a Friday night. I'm Whit Johnson in for David tonight. And we begin with the rising death toll after the remnants of Hurricane Ida hammered the Northeast with historic flooding and record-breaking rain, the deadliest tropical system in this country in four years. Tonight, more than 60 people are dead in eight states, at least 49 in the Northeast. And we're getting new images of the monster tornado that sliced through Mullica Hill, New Jersey, an EF3 with 150 mile per hour winds. Surveillance video showing powerful flash flooding destroying a basement wall. There you see it within seconds. At Rahway, New Jersey, a doorbell camera capturing a home explosion. Suspected to be from natural gas, the neighborhood had already been evacuated. In downtown Philadelphia today, they were still pumping water out of the Vine Street Expressway into the Schuylkill River. In Horsham, Pennsylvania, every power line along this street and many others is down. While in Louisiana, where the Category 4 hurricane came ashore, the devastation is still so painfully clear. President Biden paying a visit today, promising help, saying no community will be left behind. And tonight in the Northeast, flood warnings are still in effect. ABC's senior meteorologist Rob Marciano leads us off in Westchester County tonight. Tonight, new terrifying surveillance video from inside a basement in Cranford, New Jersey, showing the sheer force and speed of the flash flooding that killed dozens of people across the Northeast. Watch again. Just seconds after that person moves out of the frame, the walls caving in. Fortunately, the family's okay. Ida, now the deadliest tropical system to hit the U.S. in the last four years. We have lost a son. We have lost a sister. And this, this is, we, I cannot comprehend. At least 11 deaths in New York City tied to basement and cellar apartments. Tonight, officials revealing five of the six apartments where those deaths occurred were illegally converted units. The worst tragedies we saw on Wednesday did not happen anywhere near the shoreline. And this is another reality we have to face. The other reality families in the storm zone face, a mountain of damage. You can hear the activity picking up on this street that was hit so hard by this storm. The sidewalks are lined with garbage full of debris and damaged furniture. The water has since receded, but it's been replaced with dumpsters for the cleanup. In West Orange, New Jersey. Uh, we have five feet of water in our basement. Laura Wisner surveying the damage. She and her family moved in just over two months ago. You can see the washers and dryers were pushed far away from the walls. In Montclair, New Jersey, photographer Neil Grabowski and his team had to break a window to escape from their flooded ground level studio. Go, 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 go. Escaping through an adjacent parking garage. Right. And in Manville, New Jersey, firefighters helpless as multiple homes and a banquet hall erupt in flames. The fire department unable to get to the scenes of these fires because of the flooded roadways. And in Philadelphia overnight, a race to drain the Vine Street Expressway. Water nearly overtaking the bridge. Janae Norman on the ground this morning. Even after the rain stopped, this is the Vine Street Expressway through Philadelphia. The water had been up to those green street signs. You can see that it's come down, but at its highest point, this water line shows it would have been over my head. And outside Philadelphia, new video shows the massive tornado in Mullica Hill, New Jersey, bearing down on a home. The man inside recording as he and his dog race to the basement. Emerging to find his windows blown out, damage everywhere. That tornado rated an EF3 with winds up to 150 miles per hour. Multiple threats from this storm. Rob Marciano joining us now from Westchester County. And Rob, still just incredible damage out there we can see behind you. And although the storm is gone, there are still millions under flood alerts, thousands without power. The danger not over. Yeah, we're not quite done with this yet. We still have several rivers across the Northeast that are in flood warning, uh, much like the, the Rarian River in New Jersey, for instance, that hasn't seen level since uh, 1999, uh, Hurricane Floyd. That's over that now. And any flooding that's sitting around, residual flooding, it's going to take some time to drain. The bright spot is, is that tomorrow will be our third straight day of dry weather, and that will help everybody in these flood recovery efforts. Wait, people are desperate for that break. All right, Rob, thank you. Meantime, in Louisiana, grim new fallout from Hurricane Ida. Four nursing home patients have died, at least a dozen hospitalized after they were evacuated to a warehouse. Health inspectors say they were turned away when they tried to visit. Across the storm zone, so many still without power, scrambling for fuel, food, 
and other things. President Biden paying a visit promising federal help. ABC's Elwin Lopez is there. Tonight, growing anger and misery. Five days after Ida cut a path of destruction through parts of Louisiana and Mississippi. People still waiting in hours-long lines like these, searching for food, water, and gas in the blistering heat. We need to be rescued right now. We need ice. We're barely surviving through this heat. And tonight, the investigation into the treatment of more than 800 nursing home patients evacuated to this warehouse ahead of the storm. At least four of them have died. ABC News obtaining these disturbing images showing the crowded conditions inside. The most vulnerable and elderly sleeping on mattresses on the floor. One of the residents who was in there for five days describing what it was like. It was terrible. The mattress is on the ground. It was horrible. Her daughter says she was not allowed to visit her mother in the warehouse. They didn't have any um, electricity, no air condition for a while, generator. Well, I thought they were coming to a nursing home. That they were going to have nursing beds and be, been, they would have been taken care like they were in a nursing facility. Investigators from the Louisiana Health Department saying they were denied access to the facility. Officials now working to find alternative places for the residents. The governor bowing a full investigation. We will do everything that we can to make sure that our most vulnerable citizens are properly taken care of. ABC News reached out to the owner of the nursing homes for comment, but so far have not heard back. He reportedly told local station WAFB that he believes they did a good job given the circumstances. Late today, President Biden touring the devastation, promising no community will be left behind. This is simply about saving lives and getting people back up and running. And we're in this together. And in the face of so much destruction, communities pulling together, helping one another. No power. No power. No water. No water. You're no. out here helping others. That's what it's all about. A glimmer of hope amid all the misery there. Ellen Lopez joins us from Hard Hit Laplace. And Ellen, you're learning more about when the power may be restored to parts of Louisiana? That's right. When officials announcing today that power won't be back up and running in most of New Orleans until next Wednesday. But in some of the hardest hit areas like this one, it could take longer, possibly even weeks. What? Not the news people were hoping to hear. Ellen, thank you. We move now to the pandemic. New questions tonight about booster shots and the rollout plan set to begin on September 20th. The FDA's advisory board will review Pfizer's data on September 17th, but Moderna's data, a few weeks behind Pfizer, submitted today. 206 million people have received at least one dose, 72% of everyone 12 years and older. And with 38 million people expected to travel this Labor Day weekend, the CDC now warning the unvaccinated to stay home. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. Even the president's own top health officials are warning tonight that they aren't sure they can realistically meet his September 20th timeline. That's when President Biden was hoping to start widely delivering COVID-19 booster shots to Americans. But both the CDC and the FDA are saying they need more time to study the data from the makers of the vaccine. Moderna, for example, just finished turning in theirs today. If the recommendation is needed to get an additional dose, we don't know which populations and we don't know when. Six months, eight months, 10 months, we don't have all of that data yet. At the CDC tonight, they're also underlining their new holiday weekend travel warning for the estimated 38 million Americans trying to get away, saying that if you haven't yet gotten the vaccine, you should stay home. First and foremost, if you are unvaccinated, um, we would recommend not traveling. The numbers are keeping public health officials up at night. More than 1,000 Americans are now dying from COVID-19 each day. The worst we've seen in nearly six months. The wife of 47-year-old Carlos Chavez says he did not have to die. She says that the youth football coach from Southern California was unvaccinated because he was afraid of possible side effects from the drug. You need to get vaccinated. In my case, it saved my life. Unfortunately, my husband not being vaccinated, it cost him his life. The number of children getting sick and needing to be hospitalized is also growing. And there are millions of children heading back to school next Tuesday. At two grade schools and a high school in Miami, students lost three of their favorite teachers. The local teachers union reports that all three, including high school teacher Michael Thomas, were unvaccinated. This devastated me because 
he he didn't get vaccinated, so it just it just it just broke something within me. There's that important meeting at the FDA on booster shots on September 17th, just three days before the federal government is expected to widely roll out booster shots across America. The acting FDA chief says it feels like they're making a plan without all the data. With all right, Steve, thank you. Now to Texas tonight, Planned Parenthood pushing back against that new law that has halted the vast majority of abortions in the state, asking the court to temporarily block some potential lawsuit the measure allows. President Biden weighing in on that part of the law as well, saying that while he respects those who oppose abortion, the law encouraging individuals to sue doctors and other providers is pernicious. It just seems, I know this sounds ridiculous, almost un-American, what we're talking about. I was told that there are possibilities within the existing law to have the Justice Department look and see whether are there things that can be done. ABC's Rachel Scott joins us now from Houston. And Rachel, is there really anything the White House can do now in the face of this state law? Well, with the Biden administration it appears to be looking for every possible avenue to be able to challenge this. We know this morning White House lawyers met with advocates, but at this point their options are limited. And you said it. Planned Parenthood has now filed a request for a temporary restraining order seeking to prevent an anti-abortion rights organization in Texas from suing its doctors and health care workers. Tonight, the fate of that request is still in question, but I can tell you what the reality is setting in here in Texas. We just spoke to a health care worker in the clinic behind me. She says their call center has now turned into a crisis hotline. She says since this law has taken effect, she has had to turn away 70% of the women that she has spoken to. Wit. And other states watching this all very closely. Rachel Scott for us, thank you. Job growth slowed abruptly last month. Just 235,000 new jobs were added in August, though unemployment fell to an 18-month low and wages did rise. President Biden blaming the Delta variant surge and vowing to lay out new steps to fight the pandemic next week, but he said the economy is durable and strong. A president's job approval already suffering a hit from 50% in late June to 44% this week, falling six points. The decline reflecting the Afghanistan withdrawal, while 77% support ending the war, 60% disapprove of his handling of it. We move overseas tonight, a terror attack in a New Zealand supermarket by a known ISIS supporter, even though police had him under constant surveillance. The stabbing spree left six people injured, three in critical condition, before officers moved in and took him down. Here's ABC's James Longman. Tonight, panic at this New Zealand supermarket as shoppers realize a man has started to stab people at random. He's got a knife. Fear spreads through the shopping center. People run for the door, and the man, who grabbed a knife from a shelf, attacks six people, injuring three critically. And then, gunfire rings out. He's shot and killed by police on the scene. And his limbs started stabbing me. They went, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And then I just realized after that, oh my God, I have to run. An Islamic extremist and ISIS sympathizer, the Sri Lankan national was known to security services. In fact, he was considered such a threat that he was under constant police surveillance. Officers had actually followed him to the store, but assumed he was shopping. As soon as he started his stabbing spree, they moved in, killing him in less than 60 seconds. This man was on a terror watch list for five years and he was still able to carry out the attack. It all raises big questions yet again, not just for New Zealand, but all around the world. How can you prevent random attacks even when you know the person is a threat? And how can you do that while preserving civil liberties at the same time? With James Longman, our thanks to you tonight. Back here at home, a former Georgia prosecutor is facing charges tonight for her handling of the killing of Ahmaud Arbery. Former District Attorney Jackie Johnson is charged with obstruction and violation of duty, accused of directing police not to make an arrest after Arbery's fatal shooting as he was jogging through a neighborhood last year. The murder trial for Travis McMichael, his father Gregory, and William Bryan is set for October. They have pleaded not guilty. When we come back here on World News Tonight, disgraced former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick in court today and the guilty plea from one of the key suspects in the January 6th Capitol riot. Certain HPV-related cancers? You're not welcome here. Get out of my face. HPV can cause certain cancers when your child grows up. Get in its way. HPV can affect males and females, and there's no way to predict who will or won't clear the virus. 
The CDC recommends HPV vaccination at age 11 or 12 to help protect against certain cancers. Hey, cancer, not my child. Don't wait. Talk to your child's doctor about HPV vaccination today. This isn't 